has been a lot of turnover on UNC's roster this offseason, and it's time we talk about these changes and the dudes we got coming in. So, last year's starting lineup was obvious, with four starters returning in the addition of Pete Nance. Now that North Carolina is only returning four contributors from the previous year, the starting lineup is a little less obvious. I'm going to give it my best shot, and I want to see what creative lineups you can put together in the comments below. So with the starters, I expect the starting point guard to be Elliot Cadeau. It's no secret that he has been considering a reclass, and for good reason. Honestly, what else is there for him to do in high school? He already has a championship, he dominates every game that he's in, he's older than his peers, frankly, he's ready. As far as his game, imagine a combination of Kendall Marshall and Kobe White. Like Marshall, Elliott is a pure point guard. He has elite court vision and lately has had multiple double-digit assist games. His efficiency is off the charts, and he doesn't have to take 15 shots to take over a game. Like Kobe White, he plays at his own pace and is a much more advanced shooter than Marshall was his first year. Kobe played fast and could shoot from every level. Elliott has a deep bag too, and can hit step back threes and create unique challenges for the defense in that he's hard to speed up or slow down. That's the kind of guy you want running your offense. Now on to shooting guard. Obviously, with Cadeau taking over point guard, it's going to be RJ Davis. Where to even start with RJ? This would be a unique position for him because he was the go-to ball handler over the last year and a half, even though Caleb Love technically was a point guard coming out of high school. We'll see RJ run point if Cadeau doesn't come, but for now, I got him as our shooting guard. We all know RJ's game, and while I don't have a UNC comp for him, I often think of his game like I do Allen Iverson's. Like Iverson, RJ is pound for pound one of the best players in the country. His speed combined with elite ability to score from every level, makes him a hard guard for even the best defenders. He's not a great defender himself, so expect him to switch to the opposing team's point guard for defense. What excites me about Davis starting at the two is he will have someone to help set him up. Not including the games he was injured, RJ was fairly efficient while taking incredibly difficult shots. He should have even more space to work this year, and will have multiple players on the floor to help set him up, which leads me into our starting small forward, Harrison Ingram. With Ingram, we get a big shift from Leaky Black, who was an elite defender, rebounder, and filled a very specific role on offense as the cleanup guy and hitting the occasional corner three in his later years. Ingram is a point forward, so he brings an elite ability to pass the ball out of the post or in the pick and roll. He could be a little more assertive at times when looking to score, but experience and working in a new system should help him get even better. While he's not an elite shooter, defenses will still have to respect him from the three. Without the ball, he does well getting to his spots and can create mismatches in the post. He has NBA size. With a 7-foot wingspan, he makes for a respectable defender that's smart, works well in help situations, can defend multiple positions, and can play a small ball four if necessary. McDonald's All-Americans in their third year with this much potential and versatility are hard to find, and he could be unguardable as his aggressiveness and shooting percentage improve. Unless we add Jaron Stevenson through a reclass, which it doesn't really look that way, I expect the starting power forwarder to be Jalen Withers. I caught some flack over my opinion about Jalen Withers, but Withers is flying a little under the radar as he is coming over from one of the worst ACC teams we have seen in a while. Withers is not going to be the most athletic guy on the floor, but is incredibly versatile defensively. He has experience playing center, and while he does give a step to quicker players on the drive, he has the length to alter shots from behind. Offensively, his strength is spotting up for threes. He knocked on 44% of threes in ACC play and over 41% during the season overall. Improvement in his decisiveness off the dribble will make him a hard player to defend within the right system. Do you leave him open to connect on an open three, or try to close out and risk leaving a path to the basket? I'd like to see him get the turnovers down, but just like others in the lineup, a better supporting cast will open up easier opportunities to score. We like rebounding at North Carolina, and Withers is a respectable rebounder. In two of his three years, he finished top 10 in ACC defensive rebounding percentage. He was great on the offensive glass as a freshman, but don't expect him to make an impact there this season with much of his time being spent on the perimeter. And while we're on the subject of rebounding, there aren't many better rebounders than Armando Baycott, our starting center for the fifth year in a row. Isn't that crazy to think about? What can I say about Armando that you don't already know? He's a traditional big that is best utilized down on the block. A tenacious rebounder with touch around the basket and incredible hand-eye coordination. Not necessarily a big-time rim protector, but he's smart on defense. 
even though he doesn't play above the rim, he does use his strength to clear out space for rebounds and putbacks. He's been working on his shooting to give himself a chance at the pros, but isn't really confident enough yet to regularly pull up from mid-range. Reading a scouting report on paper doesn't exactly seem impressive for him, but he's just one of those guys you have to see for yourself to just understand how dominant he is, because he doesn't fit the mold for what the modern basketball fans like to see. Look for him to compete once again for ACC Player of the Year. Now onto the bench. A common criticism for Coach Hubert Davis is his bench usage. Even more so than last year, North Carolina should boast a respectable bench, and it'll be a major disappointment if we don't see these guys regularly hit the floor. Our six-man probably is going to fluctuate from game to game, but I'm going to start with Cormac Ryan. Expect Cormac to start in the backcourt with RJ Davis if we don't see a Cadeau reclass within the coming weeks. Like Armando, Cormac is going into his fifth year as a grad transfer from Notre Dame. Cormac is the true definition of a shooting guard. He is strong from three, has deep range, plays well off the ball, can run ball screens, a smart passer, and is just a generally good offensive player that will space the floor and keep the offense in rhythm. Like Caleb Love, he can heat up but also go cold at times. Although I see his ceiling as a shooter lower than Caleb's, I think his floor is a little higher, so take that however you want. Next is the player I'm most excited about, which is Simeon Wilcher. I think Simeon got a raw deal in his recruiting rankings. He's dropped considerably in the rankings after making the top 10, but I still see him as a top player in the class. His recent drop has only motivated him to get better, and I think he can make an immediate impact if given the proper playing time. He can play both guard spots, so he can share the backcourt with basically every guard on the roster. I really like his game, because he has a deep bag, can break down defenders and finish with either hand. He can pull it from mid-range, can shoot the three, plays the passing lane on defense. He's pretty active on defense overall, but the thing that I like the most about him is just honestly his attitude, because he's going to bring that to the locker room. He wants to win and cares about North Carolina. Just take a listen to this part of his interview with On3 Sports. So they asked Simeon, what can UNC fans expect from you as a player? Wilcher said, energy, a winning spirit, stepping in a situation like that, you have to be a person that knows how to win and play with amongst a whole bunch of good players. I'm just excited to be part of the whole Carolina family. To have the opportunity to be a part of that legacy is amazing. Yeah, that's the type of dudes that we need on this roster. I was excited about Jalen Washington when we landed him two years ago. Jalen's a stretch five. He was really that first guy that showed the shift in coaching mentality from Coach Williams to Hubert Davis. He's not the typical big rebounder that plays with his back to the basket. We saw this past season his ability to finish the rim and was effective catching the ball in the post, facing up, and hitting the mid-range jumper over his defender. He's not a hardcore rebounder like Armando, but can hold his own. One of the reasons why we didn't see him as much was not only the bench usage, but injuries that he's been battling. At one point, he was essentially a five-star recruit, but consecutive injuries pulled him down the rankings and set him back. I really hope he gets a chance to show Carolina fans that he can be a great change of pace to Armando and improve his confidence in his shot because I firmly believe that he can turn into a reliable shooter from three. Once that happens, defenses better watch out. Seth Trimble. He's going to be competing for minutes, and it will get even more competitive with adding another point guard. He's a slasher with great athleticism, strength, and quickness. He's a good defender and a good rebounder, but leaves a lot to be desired shooting. His ability to shoot the ball will likely impact his minutes in a fairly crowded backcourt. Unfortunately for him, he was often played out of position last season, so Carolina fans didn't really get to see him work to his strengths. Part of the job of a coach is to put players in positions to succeed, and hopefully we get to see Seth run the offense a little more this year and have space to drive to the basket and run the break. Our first commitment this offseason was another fifth-year guy in Paxton Wojcik. This word versatility keeps showing up, and that also fits Paxson. While playing for Brown, he filled a variety of positions on both offense and defense. He used one of his strengths in rebounding as a means to pushing the ball up the floor in transition. In conference play, he was fourth in free throw rate, so he's pretty good at getting to the free throw line. His shooting percentage from three jumped from 33 to 38% as a senior, and hopefully that trend's going to continue to improve this offseason. There is some concern about his ability to take a leap from the Ivy League to the ACC, but he does have experience in playing teams like UNC, Michigan State, and Northwestern. Hopefully that added size, skill, and athleticism will not be too much for him. I'm hoping and looking for him to be our new Puff, that scrappy guy that comes off the bench, can grab some rebounds, defend a few different positions, and hit that occasional three. Pretty sure he's also a lefty, but I'd have to check on that. If there is an injury, he may be able to slide in without too much of a drop-off in short periods of time. 
Like Ryan, I think he'll be a nice veteran addition. Zayden High will be the last guy we cover for this video as I expect him to probably get the least amount of minutes out of any of our new Tar Heels. What I like the most about Zayden is he's got a high motor. He's got good athleticism and length which has helped him become a good rebounder and gives him the ability to guard forwards and centers. I've read mixed reports about his shooting but it seems by all accounts he has a willingness to shoot and has high upside due to his form and how fluid he is shooting. While I don't expect him to log a lot of minutes, I do think that he could turn out to be a great player in the coming years, assuming that Transfer Portal doesn't steal another promising forward from the UNC roster. So, now that DeMarco Dunn's left, we've got three available scholarships, so it's probably not quite the end for us in terms of adding players. We could get somebody to reclass or get somebody from the portal. As long as we increase the bench usage and these guys we added increase our shooting percentage from the year before, North Carolina should have a bounce back year. If you're a fan of UNC and just like sports in general, take a look at this video next to my big head. You guys are awesome and I'll see you on the next one.